Okay, Pinot Noir. Island is fantastic hit, Pinot Noir. Uh, let's begin by discussing my technical failures on this song because there is a reverb bus with no reverb on it and just EQ. And I think there are two of these. We'll start with the, oh no, this is a, this is a effects bus with a compressor on it and a bit of EQ. Um, let's just, we'll go through right through my wall of shame. So this reverb send is actually just generating a lot of phasing. Um, if you double up a signal and EQ it and put it back, you'll get weird artifacts, but perhaps that was a little unintended secret to its success. Um, this FX2, uh, I don't know what is actually going into that, maybe nothing, oh there is, this was, I think, yeah, another reverb send that had the reverb turned off, so even more phasing and compression. Um, what was the other, there was one more mistake that I made, um, I'm just going to look at my list. Oh yeah, the tempo. The tempo of the project is 172.647 BPM, which is incredibly annoying. Um, and also the whole song runs at half that tempo. So you'll notice that a, a bar is actually um, twice as long as it should be. The whole thing should be half of 172.647. I can't do that in my head, but uh, this is all of a, um, a byproduct of using tap tempo um, in, in the window. You can just tap in a a tempo and it'll give you that tempo at the start so I would I would work completely blind tap the tempo out so I wasn't being um, distracted by the number and then applying that um, what I should have done was actually put it down to 172 BPM but here we are um, so we begin with a little um, arpeggiation with some bass I love how these two tracks combine. So this is a, um, a Korg M1 patch on the bass called Multibase. It's got a mapping from soft to slap. This is the velocity of the MIDI. Um, those are the two, one of the two bass patches I use would be multi-bass and slap and thump. Essentially the same thing except multi-bass has a, has a less hard, um, hard attack on the lower velocities. And the whole tune came out of this one arpeggio ostinato type, this, this uh, sort of two chord. We're just, we're just hitting two chords across pretty much the whole song. There's the second chord. And the same chord, more arpeggio. Because we're going on a little journey. This is a little um, walk through the through the forest. This is what a fine wine should um, evoke on first sip. I have no idea why I called it Pinot Noir. Um, I really don't care for wine too much, but the idea of wine is uh, fascinating. And then a super amicable, super amicable main, main melody. Keep it very, um, very sort of two-part melody. But it's sort, of, it's sort of treating you nicely. And then a little sort of answer at the end. This mix of pads, um, still working on the same two chords across the whole piece, just about. And these are the two chords. It looks a little confusing across octaves, but your window says this is E flat major seven, and this is F slash C. So two tight chords just gives you enough room to work over on the top of on the top of it. For me, this um, and a big a big part of the song is that um, we have this sweep on top of all of the pad sounds, and for me, this kind of feels like driving. I think I was still I was just learning to drive when I wrote this, so at 31 years old, don't judge me. 
um, but the sort of sensation of speed. Uh, or the kind of the wind sort of whistling past you is a kind of a, a way of sort of implying a journey or implying that you're moving through space. And then the arpeggiator sections more sort of that are coming up more more moving through space. It's about having the wind on your shoulders and you just in Swiss Alps. Could be bicycling, could be anything. Could be could be uh, barefoot running. An incredibly simple beat. Just kicking the snare. And then a little fill at the end of the uh, the bar or the measure, whatever you call it. Yeah, there's there's no shuffle or swing on any of the tracks here. The, the whole thing is actually completely unfunky. Um, whatever funk it gets is from the accents in the bass especially on the slap bass solo and to some extent the off beats from the um, from the steel drums that are coming up later oh this bit this, this, is, this is a good bit so this is we've, we've seen this part before but not with this bass line So the bass line sort of switches up and the whole thing gears up um, with more tension and funkiness because the accents on the slaps are actually uh, intentionally placed to be in parts where you don't expect them. So the, it's sort of the thing gets a little bit more cacophonous. Pairs of accents, accents on off beats and on beats, accents on weird sixteenths, and then this kind of short. Also, the the snare is always has it always has space carved out for it by the bass the bass solo. I'm calling this a solo. Um, every time the bass line stops that short phrasing there's a snare I didn't notice when this uh, until I started playing this live because I would mime slap bass and I realized I had time to mime the snare hit as well in between this the slap bass um, phrases so this is very much thinking about bass as a percussion instrument and sort of interlocking the kick the snare and the bass but then adding all this texture on top of it to make it just... And there's offbeats from Wonderland and Steel Drum. Wonderland is on every eyeliner record. It's a great little pan flute style patch with some cool echo on it. And then we've got Hellion 1, which is a an included um, plugin with Nuendo 4. It does a lot of acoustic instruments. The Steel Drum's pretty good in that. So steel drums as a steel drums as a signifier for for uh, privilege and travel, you know, Caribbean, um, you know, the the lens of uh, international travel, uh, luxury. This kind of idea, steel drums. I mean, that's plainly obvious, but something to think about. Keeping the same idea with the keeping the space and the snare with the with the bass line, with a little counter melody on top. Keep it very simple. Keep it very direct. Keep it very chill for the listener, because it's got it's been a little bit busy until now. And then bring back the old elements that we've heard before: the steel drum, the pad sound. So it sort of blossoms out, it's got this like vista opening up, hopefully. Then we have the second bass solo coming up. And the 
this is actually um, every note is synonymous with the bass line and this animation patch so it's a pan flute and bass solo but they are they're playing more of a duet same space for the snare break it up here because there's a little we're, we're crossing into the snare here we'll do it a couple of times I love it how uh, the bass line hits twice there on the same. It's, it's kind of going, I told you so, I told you so. This bit. It hammers the point home twice. And then there's the drip. So there's a drip. This is the, uh, the last drip of wine from the bottle. Or, you know, it's kind of plunge, you're plunging into the sea or into your own private pool. And it culminates in these two, these two choir sounds. This, 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 this is the same choir sound, but one's, one just has more reverb on it. Um, and it's that kind of expansive um, push. So the first one's short and the second one's long. Also, there's this pitch shifter with a with a delay in the uh, a, a pitch shifter with a delay in the feedback loop, so you can have um, echoes that increase in pitch. You can hear it on the soft one, but better. Kind of goes. Wah, 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 wah. But that's more of a kind of psychoacoustic idea rather than ramming pitch shift. Uh, over the listener's head this is just to make it a bit more kind of expansive a little subtle one more drip Then they, uh, what I love doing is the eyeliner epiphany moment. This is kind of the, uh, the, the epiphany. This is the Nirvana. This is the Satori. This is, uh, before the outro, we have this kind of, um, glory, glorious bit. Um, and it's done pretty much only via sound. There's nothing more additional musically happening. It's just more powerful sounds and longer bass notes. That's the first time that the bass is actually ever long and a note across the whole piece let me just prove that to myself yes so we have this kind of bed of bass and then the kick drums that are marking out every every bar or yeah well every two bars but because of technical issues with the tempo track every bar and i love the um combination that you get between this kick drum in the choir it's almost like the kick drum sets off that choir they're kind of they're kind of linked to, linked together So the crickets in the um, the outro actually, I think, yes, in this new morning on the MIDI map, anything played above C4 has crickets on top. And this kind of thing is that that's the jewel in the crown of, of um, wavetable synthesis is that you have this whole domain of um, 
for better or worse, world music instruments, things like, you know, shakuhachi or sitar or um, any manner of instruments sort of being mungled through this um, sort of computerized memory system. But also you get, you know, metallic clangs and crickets and thunderstorms and gunshots and helicopters and... But that was just a happy accident because underneath is just bell sounds and uh, a water sound but then you get up into the higher um higher edge to of course you have crickets i mean what else would you want and that's a big part of eyeline is sort of sonic motivation is to use these sort of sounds in their own context and then also finding a new context but it's great because you you play a note, you get a cricket. And it is kind of that sort of wine uh, travel, um, luxury, uh, lifestyle block, um, you know, nature. Um, just on the last... The last note of the piece, there's some beautiful crickets. The original name for it was 52 Concrete. I don't know why, because uh, I usually pick a a, um, a number and a and a name. Um, I was thinking a lot about, there's a, a band called Adding to X that have a song called The Sound of Concrete. Um, and maybe that that concrete became the, the driving sensation from this, this part. Um, but it's definitely not about concrete, it's about it's about movement and it's about, um, in addition to all the other eyeliner stuff of, you know, luxury and wine. There is a, a few extra tracks in the multi-track because there is one sort of misguided part, um, which is just this one RPGO. I should have reused this, but that's that. Yeah, that adds a couple more tracks to the to the whole thing. <laughs> totally classic. We don't have much working stuff at the end of this last session, but there is, I think, a misguided key change that I tried. Yeah. So this is me just trying to modulate through through keys to see if there's anything. And then it crashes into like this weird interval. But going from that original key to that that other one would have been very jazzy. But I I wasn't up to speed technically musically with um, being able to do that sort of thing at that point but that chord is just inexcusable N never let anyone hear it see that's that's the ins and outs of Pinot Noir <laughs> 